So with that uh, preamble, let's get started. We're talking about segmentation. Uh, and so uh, you should see on this screen, and, and one of the things you're going to see right off the bat is, uh, what do I mean by segmentation, right? What are we talking about? And uh, the, the simplest definition that I use is it's the process of using data from customers and their interactions to group them for better targeted action, right? And you go, oh, okay, that's a, a lot of big words. What are, we, what are we really talking about here? And you go, well, what we're talking about is trying to differentiate customers so that you can treat the ones that are similar, right, uh, in groups the same way, right? So you can make personalized or nuanced messaging, nuanced actions that you can take for different groups of people, right? In other words, right, we want to treat different people differently so they don't feel like we're treating everyone the same. And if you have ever been uh, into a place where you realize, boy, they're being polite, but they're being polite in a rote way, like they're saying hello, or they're saying, can I help you? Or they're saying whatever they're saying, they say that to everybody, right? Um, and all of a sudden that feels like it's less valuable, right? When someone says, you're my favorite customer, or when they say, it's been great working with you, or they say, you know, it's wonderful to have you in our store, and you realize, yeah, but I just heard you say that to every other person that walked in, it doesn't feel the same, right? So if you wanna treat different people differently, so that they know that you are not treating everybody the same way, segmentation uh, is the answer. And so we have experienced this in real life. Now, I, I find this particularly funny because the first thought that came to mind when I thought about it was the, the TV show Cheers. And, uh, and I thought, oh man, it's just like, like, you know, there's Norm and there's Sam and there's, and you, I started thinking through Cheers and the cast and how it played out. And you go, hey, in every bar, right? You got the regulars, which are, you know, their name, you know, their drink. As someone walks in the door, they're like, you know, hey, Norm. And then you you slide over the beer right in front of him because you know this is what he's going to drink and all that. Then you have the familiars, people that you've seen several times, but you don't necessarily know uh, their drink. And then you have the strangers, right? You don't know their name. You don't know their drink. Uh, as I as I prepped it, I showed it to, I showed the slide deck to a friend of mine who said, uh, what's, what's cheers? <laughs> and I went, oh, my gosh, it has been a really long time since this was on the air. Uh, so... If you don't understand uh, this metaphor or this dynamic, think about Starbucks, right? When you walk into Starbucks, same kind of thing. If you walk in, and especially if you walk in at 7.30 in the morning, you're going to be in line with people who they, on the other side of the counter, they know, right? The Starbucks staff are like, oh, hi, you know, hi, Sam. Hi, Chris. Hi, Frank, right? They, they just know, and they're like, okay, you want to, and they'll, they'll rattle off the name of the drink. And then it's your turn. And if you've never been there at that time in the morning, right? You walk up and they just look and how can I help you? And you realize, wow, they didn't know my name. They didn't know my drink. I'm clearly in the strangers group. But the point is, is that Starbucks or Cheers or any bar out there, they don't treat everybody the same way, right? You can easily see segments of people and how the environment adjusts based on the context of, you know, how the frequency of someone visiting, the, um, the actions taken, et cetera, right? I, I I love watching this in real life. Um, every now and then, right? I, I have a general rule of thumb, which is on the first of the month or the last day of the month, if we are out at a restaurant, my tip is massive, right? So you think about it like, okay, you go to a restaurant, you sit down, you have dinner, and maybe it costs you know fifty, sixty dollars for dinner, right? And then you go, okay, so the tip on a fifty dollar, the tip is you know, I don't know, seven dollars. Uh, you know, if you want to be, if you want to be a, a, you know, good customer, maybe you're talking about ten dollars, right? But on the 30, 30th, 31st, or first, if we're out to dinner, my general rule is that um, my tip is something like fifty dollars on a fifty dollar meal, right? Like a hundred percent. And uh, um, and you go, that's that's crazy. Why is that? I go, well, because waiters. Um, both female and and male waiters, uh, they're they're you know they gotta pay rent, right? And and when you're in the service industry and nobody's paying attention to two dollars, three dollars, whatever, those those rent days, the last day of the month, the first day of the month, those are stressful days. And if there's something I can do to make it a little less stressful, that's what I want to do, right? Well, apparently we had done this at a restaurant, right? Um, I forgot because it's just a default now, so I'd forgotten about it. And we went to the restaurant two weeks later. And when we walked in, I saw 
a person I do not recall, hadn't seen before, did not, they, no recognition. And I saw them almost run to the host uh, counter and say, oh, put them in my group, right? And I, I, I mean, I saw them move quickly. I didn't know what they said. But then when I got to the host station, they, they said, oh, we'll take you right back here, um, you know, to, to Bill's station. And I was like, okay, I, I don't know who Bill is, right? We sat down and waited a couple minutes and then uh, the waiter walked up and was like, hey guys, all right, so you want a Diet Coke, right? And you're gonna want an iced tea um, or, or you're gonna want the, the red blend wine, right? And my wife was like, yeah, I love a red blend. And I said, yeah, Diet Coke's great. And then he, he left and I looked at my wife, I went, um, have, we, have we had him before, right? She goes, oh, I, I think so. I, I, I'm like, is this someone we had when, you know, on the last day of the month? She goes, well, I would imagine because he was eager to get us at his table and, and eat, you know, and he remembered our drinks, right? And you go, yeah, we, we didn't feel regular, right? But, um, but we definitely felt like he was taking extra special care. Of course, I think he was a little bummed out when, uh, you know, a mid-month meal didn't result in the same kind of, I mean, we were still nice, but it didn't result in the same kind of tip. Um, but middle of the meal, my wife just looked at him and said, have we, have we, uh, have you served us before? And he's like, yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. To, oh, okay, got it, right? And we figured it out. But you treat people differently, right? You treat people differently based on their behavior, based on their interaction. And that's what this waiter was doing. He'd gotten a, a big tip at one point and was like, okay, I'm going to remember their, their drink orders and I'm going to take care of them. I want, when I see them, I'm going to welcome them and I'm going to take them into my space and, and really make sure that they get served carefully, right? And you go, that's, that's real life what we're talking about when we talk about segmentation, all right? So why should we care so much about segmentation? Well, there's three reasons, right? Three reasons. The first is, do you want to convert more people, right? Do you want higher conversion rates? Because if you want higher conversion rates, trying to treat everybody exactly the same is not going to get you there, right? You're going to want to be able to treat people with nuance, different groups of people, different ways, and conversion rates will go up when you're thinking about, okay, yeah, I want to pay attention to my segments, um, treat different people differently, and then you go, okay, wow, it is having an effect on conversion. But there's also the notion of growing revenue over the lifetime of that relationship, right? Um, when, if you go to a very high end resort, uh, uh, a high end anything, but if you go to a high end, uh, hotel like the Ritz Carlton, um, they, they understand, right. The long-term value of their customers. And so they treat their customers differently, right. Because of the expectation, right. Now, if you've, it, I, I, the first time I went to Ritz Carlton, right. Um, it was very clear they understood it was my first time, right? They just looked at their register and they went, this guy's never been with us before. So I opened the door to our, my room and there is a basket of fruit. And you're like, wow, do they give a basket of fruit to everyone on every visit? No, they treated me differently because I was in a different group. That group was first time buyers, right? And so they said, okay, we're gonna give you this fruit. Now, would that suddenly grow my lifetime value? No, no, what was interesting was the second visit. Because in the first visit, right, we ate, my wife and I ate the apples and we ate the pears, but we didn't eat some of the other fruit, right? Um, well, lo and behold, the person who came and cleaned up the room and took the basket away, took notes. I went, okay, this is what they ate. So the second time that I stayed in a Ritz-Carlton, which was not in the same location, but it was in another place. I went in, I was in LA and I spent the night there for a meeting that was going to happen the next day. And I go into my room and I have, you know, this, this spread laid out, welcome back. Again, now I'm a second time visitor. Um, and it was just apples and pears, nothing else. And now you start paying attention. You go, oh, I really like this place because they pay attention to me. They pay attention to my likes. They take care of me, whatever, right? And so you're like, wow, this is amazing. I took my wife the third visit for her birthday, right? And I'm not joking. We pulled the car into valet. They opened the doors and they were like, happy birthday, Melissa. And then we went to the front door. The doorman opened the door. He's like, happy birthday, Melissa. We went to check in and you're like, this, this is nice. Well, they can afford to do that, right? Because the rate of that room per night is expensive, but also because they understand that a person that visits and then visits again and visits again, over the course of that lifetime may be worth a quarter of a million dollars, right? They have an LTV of $250,000. They can afford to take care of you because they're playing the long game, right? And the third dynamic in terms of why you should segment 
is better customer insights, right? The, the notion that you would better understand how people work in your store because you've started to differentiate between these different ones and make different recommendations. And then you'll start seeing, wow, when I recommend this product to this kind of customer, it really seems to take, and this kind of product doesn't, huh? Maybe that's telling me something. Maybe that's telling me something that these customers don't need this kind of product, right? Or uh, people seem to be dropping off. I, I worked with a company once that said, 50% um, of our customers leave within the first three months, but the 50% that stay after one year, right, stay forever. And you go, well, okay, that's good news that the ones who last a year stay forever, but what's going on in that realm of like, half your people leave and like the fact that you know the data right now that you can segment out and understand the data allows you to turn around and say now what insights can i have and how can i make things better right so that's the that's the why what i want to do is talk about several different segments right the first segment is first time visitors right these are people who have never been to your store before right What's, what's an easy way to know that? Um, if you drop cookies, right? If you drop a cookie, uh, a technical leave a small file with a small uh, bit of data that says, hey, you know, they've, they've been there. If you, if you drop a cookie when they visit, then the absence of that cookie tells you they're a first time visitor, at least on that device, right? Um, and you can get fancier across multiple devices if you have fancier tools, but fundamentally you can go, oh yeah, I've never seen this person before. And you ought to think about how would you interact with people if you've never interacted with them before, right? Let's say that you have some pop-up software um, uh, predominantly around when people leave, right? Exit intent software, something like Optin Monster or whatever. What well, you might, uh, if you were super excited because you're like, this stuff works, it's amazing. As much as most people don't like it, it does demonstrate to have effect. Um, but you might say, hey, on the first visit, wait until the third page view. Whereas someone, but on a second or third visit, or you just pop it up after 10 seconds, right? You might adjust how you interact with someone based on the fact that they're a first time visitor, right? So how you interact with people, right? Ought to be tied to what you know about them. And one of the first things that you can know about them is, I don't know anything about them. A different kind of first timer is a first time buyer, right? That's people who have never made a purchase on your platform before. If you don't have their email in your system, if you don't have them for any orders, uh, you can tag them that way, right? So depending on what software you have and what integration, we'll talk about that later, but you could tag them as, hey, this is the first purchase. You could totally change what kind of emails you send, including making even a recommendation, right? If they were the first purchaser and they bought X, can I get them a coupon for Y? Can I make a recommendation for Y? Um, happens all the time for me, right? I, I am a avid e-commerce and online shopper. I buy a lot of stuff online. And more importantly, I buy a lot of stuff from a lot of different stores. And one of the benefits of doing that is that you get to experience all of their first time buyer process, right? And some stores are fantastic at this. Hey, thanks for shopping. Thanks for trusting us with your money. Thanks for finally buying this thing, you're part of the family and blah, blah, blah. And now what I wanna do is give you a 20% coupon in this category of products because people who bought this backpack, this bag, this headphones, this whatever, really often buy this too. And you go, huh, I went to you, I, I discovered you and found you through a Facebook image or through an Instagram ad or whatever. I found you through this one thing, which meant I only thought of you as, as in this space. But now you've sent me an email and you've introduced me to another space. And you've told me that a lot of people that buy in this space often buy over here. So let me click this link and just go look. And now that I'm looking, yeah, let me go back to my email and grab that code. I'll buy a second thing, right? So you can send very nuanced emails, right, to people when you understand these are first time buyers, right? Um, one way to, to look at this, right, um, is I use a system called Glue, G L E W. Right um, now, you can do this with Google Analytics. Uh, they integrate with Google Analytics to bring in some more data, right? Um, but Glue allows me to have this segment that is first purchase, right? And in this example, right, you see, oh, it's only two people, right? There's only been two orders, so each one made a single order. Um, 
the average order value is $154, which is not bad, right? When you go, oh, I think across my store, it's 74. So 150 is twice as much. These are great folks, right? Um, I could I can move into another tab that looks at the, the products that were purchased. Um, they have an integration directly into MailChimp if I configure it, but you can also export this to CSV, right? Since I use ConvertKit, I could just pull these people out, stick them in ConvertKit if I didn't already have an integration to WooCommerce, which again, we'll talk about later. But you can see data that tells you, ooh, let me define the segment and then let me look at the data, right? Now, another group is repeat buyers, right? These are people who made the first purchase and then they come around and they make a second purchase, right? In this case, you'll see, here we have 208 people who've made a purchase a second time, right? They've made more than 500 orders, uh, but look at that average order value, right? Repeat buyers, right? They start they start leaning back to the norm, which is the average purchase, um, you know, uh, and and the average one across carts. I think I read the other day was like $68, and you go, yeah, okay, I get it. Um, this this example is a little bit higher, but um, you'll see in the in the top right, this is the LTV or the lifetime value, right? For, for repeat buyers, the lifetime value is $191. And you go, okay, all right, that's, you know, that's, that's good. Um, that's more than two of these orders, right? Uh, and so, again, in your systems, whatever system you're using, right, you can do this even with just tags, right? When someone has a tag and the first tag is first-time buyer, and then when you go to place, you know, when you go say, oh, there's an order for a person, if they have the first-time buyer and you're about to put the order tag, put not only remove the first time buyer, but add repeat customer, right? Um, and and make those adjustments. And you can do you can do those things in Mailchimp. You can do those things in ConvertKit. You can do those things in um, uh, Drip. You can do those in a lot of different CRMs, um, Active Campaign, where you can adjust the tags as you're integrating from your store. The point though is to have the tags, right? The point though is to say I want to know who are my repeat customers. And who are my repeat customers in the last 12 months it tells me, you know, these are either active customers that repeat, not who are my repeat customers from six years ago who repeated five and six years ago and I haven't seen them since, right? That's that's not the same thing. What about high spenders, right? People who spend more money than your average transaction. So if my average transaction say is $75, right? Then I'm looking for someone who has way over that, right? And, and in this particular case, big spenders, right? This looks at, People who are in the top 10%. Now you could do it just people who are above $75, right? If that's your average spend, um, average interaction. Um, but in this particular case, what Glue does for me is it looks at the top 10%, right? So it's really looking at a smaller set of customers, right? Represents 10.3% of the customer base. Um, and, uh, and what you get is, hey, the average order value is way higher, right? You'll see their LTV is $213, right? That's good news. Oh, uh, I am suddenly just automatically moving forward. Didn't mean to. So $213 uh, and, and their average order is 160. So it means they're buying more expensive stuff, right? They're buying or they're buying more stuff in the cart in a single transaction. Uh, and that's important, right? Because you want to be able to know, hey, and, and again, you can do this with Google Analytics. You can do this in their e-commerce pieces where you go in and you configure it. The point is, do you have these people segmented? Do you have them tagged in your systems where you send out email and everything else? Do you have a tag for the big spenders, right? Because if you do, then you can message differently. You can write them different stuff. You can adjust your website based on that. So a, a lot of this is just, let's make sure we have some clear definitions of what these um, segments are, and then what can I do with them, right? So then you have the most valuable customers, right? And this is not about, having a larger than average order volume uh, uh, ticket price, right? This is people who spend more than the average customer over the long haul, right? So this is the LTV. And you'll remember over here, right? We said for big spenders, the LTV was 213. For uh, repeat customers, it was 191. And then we get to here and you see, oh, VIP customers, the LTV um, is 309, right? The lifetime value, that means, hey, what Glue does for me is say, let me take all these customers and against all their revenue, and then let me take the top 10%, put them in a group, and you go, yeah. Now, you'll notice the average order value is lower, right? So these are just people who are making more orders. You'll see here 37 that generate 107. If you've been watching that, you go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
that is on average more orders per customer than normal. And at this price, you go, yeah, that's, you know, that's good. Um, so I can tag them in my system. Uh, these are VIPs, right? Coupon lovers, right? These are people who basically just use coupons for their purchases. And you go, okay, coupon people, right? Um, this is from a different store, right? And you can see, look at this, right? These people have generated next to no money. Why? They're using massive discount codes, right? Uh, this happens to be a very, very small site where uh, the data set in this case was just over the course of uh, the last couple of months where I gave away a bunch of free eBooks, right? Gave out a coupon code that would make the price zero. And you can see 64 people all came to the site, all bought the books for free and basically spent no money. You go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. I get it. But what do you do with value shoppers, right? What do you do with people who always use a discount code when they're purchasing? Well, you send them another discount code, right? Because you already know what triggers them. You already know what they're interested in. You go, oh, let me get you a coupon code. Now, does it have to be 100% off? No, it could be 20 or 30% off or 40% off. And it can be on a, a high margin product, right? You can control that, but you know what, what they'll react to, right? And then at-risk customers, right? These are people who haven't returned to your store in some amount of months, right? Now, the amount of months is critical to you understanding your own store because everybody's store is different. I can't tell you, hey, they haven't been to your store in six months. Psh, they're done. They're never coming back. Because what if you sell something that people normally buy yearly, right? It would, there'd be no reason for them to come back during the year. I worked with a company years and years ago that sold uh, ropes on the high-performance boats, yachts that race, right? But they would buy those, you know, uh, Yale Cordage, they would buy those ropes, um, uh, I don't know, every couple of years, right? And so then you start going, okay, how do I help repeat purchasers? How do I know what the life cycle model is for that product? Should it last three years? So then what do I start doing and messaging them two and a half years into it so that they're prepped for the three-year mark and it's time to change your ropes on your boat, right? Um, Glue has a great way of thinking about this. They call it the lapse point, right? Which is, if they look at your specific store and all the transactions in your store, and they look at all the repeat transactions, and they take the time distance between those, and in this particular sample of a store, it says, hey, the, the, the default here is 67 days. The average distance between orders is fixed at this amount for your store specifically, for your customer specifically. And now that you know that, after a person buys, is that the moment to send them something that says you need to buy right now? No, because they just bought, they're happy. So there's gonna be a window of active, when they're, that customer status is active, you don't have to do anything, they're still happy with you. But then you're gonna get into that the last 10, 15 days before the 67 day lapse. And you go, oh, now it's time to start sending those emails, get them to circle back for another purchase. And then once we've crossed that, uh, we're gonna have them in the loss category, right? The loss status. These are people that are past that point and I got to circle back, right? Um, and so you being able to know, right, just on your own and you can pull all the data and you can, you can analyze it to know between repeat purchases, what's the average distance, right? H how long do people wait before they make another purchase? And therefore, what does that mean about going back to these people, right? Is it every three months? Is it every four months, five months, 10 months, 12 months? What is the rate at which I should make sure that I don't let people get away? right? But what I just gave you really was just the beginning. What about some of these things, right? Multiple purchases in a category, highest spenders in a category, buyers who purchased after they initiated a chat, buyers who purchase after they initiate a search, shopping cart abandoners, right? People researching a single product. How would you do that? If you've been to my site and you've only looked at a max of two or three pages and uh, it's included uh, X minutes on a page that's categorized as a product page, then boom, you're researching a single product, right? What about people who regularly abandon and convert? Meaning they put it in their cart, they leave for a couple of days, you send them a coupon after four days, they come back, they buy. And you're like, yes, I, 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 got money that was gonna fall off the table. I had been leaving on the table because I hadn't done any card abandonment. And now I have all these people who are coming back and using a discount code. And you go, wait, 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 
How do you know that someone isn't just gaming you? I talked to a person who said, oh, what I do is I just go to different stores, things I like, I just throw it in the cart and then I leave. Three days later, I get coupons, I go back, I buy everything at a discount. I'm like, on, first of all, on the one hand, that's genius, right? But on the second hand, how do I, I, I need to go, I need to go pull this data, right? How many people are abandoning cart and then converting, but doing it consistently, regularly? Not once every now and then, but I mean like, they bought 10 items from, they bought 10 transactions or in the last six months and every single transaction functioned the same way. And you go, hmm, maybe I don't send them a coupon, right? Maybe I tag them with, with something else and I, I work with them differently. So the reality is part one of this thing is, can you define your segments, right? Can you define your segments? And can, I use, can you go in and use tools to make sure that you have those segments tagged so that you can do stuff with them? right? Tools you're going to need? Well, by all means, you're going to want Google Analytics. You're also going to want an email or a CRM system, right? MailChimp, you can, you can do tagging in MailChimp. Uh, I use ConvertKit. Uh, I have some friends who are active campaigners. Um, I, I, there's a whole bunch of people that use Drip, right? There's a lot of different uh, Infusionsoft, right? There's a lot of systems out there where you can tag a customer, right? Um, and that tagging is what's critical. But the way you tag is that third piece, which is the store integration. Can you connect your store to that system so that when they make purchases um, and when Google Analytics sees that they spent time on certain pages, you can tag them in your CRM so that when you go to send out email, you can filter which emails go to which groups of seg which segments, right? And you can then track how well those perform, right? So as I mentioned, I use uh, ConvertKit with WooCommerce and they have a plugin, right? And when you install the plugin, which is the ConvertKit for WooCommerce, um, when you install the plugin, you're gonna go into WooCommerce settings and in integration, in the integration tab, because it doesn't show up anywhere else in your WooCommerce store. But when you go into the integration tab, you're gonna see, hey, let's enable this. And do I wanna do it on when the order is processed, when it's done? I do it early in the order created process. Do I wanna display an opt-in check-in box? Like, hey, I, I, you know, let me know, you know when I do this and you go, yes, I want, I wanna get an email from you, right? You can adjust that label, but also your default, you're gonna to wanna to leave it unchecked, right? You, you don't wanna do this um, pre-check it and then get in trouble depending on if customers are coming from Europe. Um, We've talked about GDPR before, don't need to go into all again, but in general, right? I'm very comfortable leaving it unchecked and saying, no, seriously, if you wanna know from and hear from me, go ahead and check it. Um, where do you display it? You're gonna have to put in your convert kit keys and then uh, what tag do you wanna add, right? What tag do you wanna add? They call it a subscription. In reality, this is just a tag. And so I can say, hey, for this particular uh, site, when they have started the purchase, right? When they've, they've kicked it off, um, I want you to tag them that way, right? Um, when they first log in, I can change the tag to now they've logged in. I mean, again, you can do this all day long um, and very, very powerful, but this allows you to integrate, to be the glue between a WooCommerce store and a um, ConvertKit store. Same things you could happen for MailChimp, same things you could happen for Active Campaign. others, is you wanna do the integration so that um, you can do this, this kind of tagging, right? Um, it's very, very powerful, uh, and, they, and there's even more. I mean, you, 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 we could spend a whole bunch of time just on this kind of integration and, and advanced tagging techniques, and at some point I'll probably do that. Um, but the point is, you're gonna need Google Analytics, a CRM system, and an integration or the glue that connects the dots so that you can, pa you can pass these transactions over and you can tag them the right way, and that way you can start doing the rest of the work that you wanna do. So. Now that you have these segments, what should you do with them? I'm just gonna walk through a series of examples, some ideas, um, and in all these ideas, or all but one, I'm gonna show you uh, some updates that have happened to a product called Jilt, um, because Jilt used to just do emails for abandoned cart, now they do more, right? So what happens if you want to say, hey, I would like to ask for a product review, right? I might do that for a specific segment, right? And 
I could say, okay, for these group of people, right, who've bought more than one product in this category, for example, you could start thinking about tagging them a certain way and going, okay, but these guys at Jill, right, will create a campaign that just says, hey, let's ask for a product review, right? And you can see there's different rules, right? It's this type of campaign, right? And you can go in and configure it and, and process it and all that. Jill lets you do a lot, right? It lets you create a lot of different customized emails. They go out to different segments, doing different things. And it used to be that it was all about, you know, this one here, cart abandonment, but now there's more. So one of the things you can do for a special sub segment, right, is to say, hey, um, I would like to invite them to leave a review. And you go, okay, that's good, right? What else can you do? Well, if they've made a purchase, I can put them into a sequence, right? I can literally go, hey, now that they've bought this kind of product, right? What are some of the things I want to do? And sequences can be anything. They do not have to be sales or sales oriented sequences, right? You could just literally onboard them, right? If you buy, um, imagine, imagine that I buy a, a very nice and expensive set of headphones, right? Um, which you don't have to imagine because I do all the time, but imagine I, I have them. What's, what's going to happen? Well, one of the things that happens is I'm going to want to tell my friends about it. But if you are the maker of the headphones, don't you want to shape what I tell my friends? So why don't you tell me what you want me to tell other people, right? So what happens is you send out a, thank you so much for purchasing it. I know that you probably looked at a lot of different products before you bought ours, but here's a couple things that you may not know we do. And you give me the, that information. And I go, oh, I didn't, right? And then three days later, five days later, seven days later, I get another email that says, hey, welcome to the family. So glad you've been, hopefully you've been using them all week. Here's a trick that you may not know you can do, right? But you don't have to push the little button underneath to, to turn them off, right? You can just take them off your head and we'll automatically notice that you're not wearing them and we'll turn it off. That saves you battery power. And you go, now I have another thing I can tell my friends about, right? So you can encourage evangelism, again, segment of people, but you can do it with an email sequence, right? You can also email VIP customers. Right. And so you can say, hey, in this particular case, you know, case, right, you'll see over here, customer order count is greater than this, financial status paid, da, da, da. You can do it this way. You can also, just like I said, right, tag them through uh through the orders, tag them in back into a convert kit and then send it out through there. You can do it the other way, which is go into something like glue, look for my VIPs, take that list, stick them, you know, export it, stick it in a convert kit. I mean, there's so many ways you can do this technically. But the point is not, can I tag my people? The point is, what do I do with it, right? And a lot of people tag, 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 and don't do anything. And you're like, no, that's not what I want. So imagine I call a VIP. Does a VIP need a 10% coupon? Probably not, right? Now that's not saying a coupon isn't great for them, but what they like is potentially influence, impact, that ability to have voice in your product line. And so you just say, hey, you know what? I just want to Thank you so much for being a VIP. You you spend you know you're in the top ten percent of my customer base, and um and here's what I here's what I'd like to do is schedule time with you just to hear your feedback on our products. Anything we can do to make them better? And they're like, yeah, that's that's amazing, right? So schedule a call feedback. What can you do for a repeat purchaser? Right, someone who's made more than one purchase, you can offer them a discount right? But time, like, hey, this is a coupon that's going to last until the end of this month. I'm sending it to you on the 26th, right? So it's a four-day, here's a window, let's push up some revenue, right? So as long as you know who these people are, they've already made purchases before, you go, okay, let me get you a very special discount code that only is going to work for the next three days. Got to get you to make this purchase right now, right? But, but you don't have to, but if you, given that you're a repeat purchaser, right? I, I feel pretty confident you might make another purchase. So let me send out a coupon, right? And again, you can shape that coupon how you want. Is it for a category? Is it for the whole store? Is it percentage-based, et cetera? And then, right, send them a custom recommendation. If they have made a purchase, and one of, one of the features that Glue has is you can look at every single customer if you want, and you can go in and say, what what should I send them next, right? And it's munging all that data and putting, you know, categorizing that person going, this person is much like these other people and therefore 
if they bought this, they're likely going to buy these other things. So let's put it in the queue over here for this guy. So you can make a recommendation and say, I think you should buy this next. So you can do that, right? You can do that again through collecting the data in Glue. You can do it by configuring data in your own email system or using Jilt to do it and create a campaign, right? A lot of things you can do for those customers, right? But maybe the most interesting that you could do um, is buy a company called writemessage.com. And writemessage.com will allow you, right, to change your site, change your site's layout. I did this when I worked with an agency. We did this for a client of ours, and they were a fairly well-known organization. And what was happening was customers would come in and navigate through the site to different sections of the site and spend time there. And they had that data, and they had that tagging. And so they knew, based on you coming back, they knew you're more this person or this person, this person. What they wanted was to change the homepage so that dynamically it would get resorted, right? Like, Hey, imagine you go to a company that sells enterprise products and uh, sells for businesses. They sell data center products for ISPs and they sell consumer products for everyday people. You are unlikely to be in two of those segments at once. For that customer, you're likely to be in only one of them. So once they know where you're spending your time on their site, they can tag you with that one. Well, if they tag you with that one and you get back to the homepage, shouldn't the homepage reflect who you are and what you care about rather than a whole bunch of other material you don't i mean i'm not saying you can't have those available somewhere but shouldn't the layout of your site be focused on how to make sure that you now that you've come back have a really great experience and you go yeah but there's no way to do that and my response is yeah now there is a company called right message does this right now just to be clear and honest up front i am a customer right of right message Chris Lemma is, right? Um, I am also an investor in the company, right? So um, full disclosure, that's how much I think they're awesome, right? Uh, but you could just go take a look, right? And I guarantee you, you're gonna start realizing, wow, if I tagged my customers and then I started changing the site based on that tagging, wouldn't that be the very best experience customers could have? You go, yeah. And I don't even have to, know their names. I don't have to, you know, get really complicated about who they are. I just have to know when you came in, how often you spent time, right? All the stuff that Google gives you where you're like, okay, they did this, they've been here, they did it. So if you took those, that interaction and information from Google, if you pushed it into uh, your, your email or CRM system, and now you have them tagged, what, what right message does is it reads the tags from that system. And then when you come back and they've determined that it's you, right? Uh, those tags now are running with you in the session so that you can now make dynamic changes to your site based on those tags. And you go, that, that is incredible, All right? So uh, I forgot my slide that says questions. Um, so that's, that's the things you can do, right? Those are all the different things you can do with segments. Those are all the segments that you should have. And what I wanna do now is just open it up for questions in case you have any, uh, segmentation questions before um, and uh, and we'll try and uh, try and answer them here right so I have one note from Dennis who says uh, that he used to live out by me and and he's met me before so uh, that's awesome uh, glad to have you on uh, this this webinar right uh, let's see what other questions people have right as they come in. Uh, one question is about right message and how much it costs, and another is about glue and how much it costs. Well, um, right message, they actually just adjusted their pricing because they're now rolling out different kinds of products. This little, uh, oh, sorry, one second. This little component down the bottom where you can ask a question and a little survey, and then it'll automatically segment you based on that, is now one of their early products to get people engaged. So, so you should check that out. Pricing is now adjusted because they have different products. So. Uh, I don't want to quote you, but you can go check that out. Glue, the good news with Glue and the good news with Jilt um, is that if you are a Liquid Web managed WooCommerce hosting customer, they're included, right? So you don't have to go out and buy it on your own. Um, but you can, right? Jilt's 
uh, pricing is predicated. They have their own pricing grid, but it's predicated on how many engaged customers you're sending email to. Um, and glues is based on the revenue of your store. Uh, again, both of those you can end up spending a, a lot of money on and, uh, and you don't have to uh, if you're using any one of our um, stores. And particularly we're talking about the standard stores. So just today we launched two more. So three out of a total of four beginner plans. Those beginner plans have jilt. They don't have uh, glue on the high end or, or, you know, if you have an existing store that's doing stuff, that comes with um, both chill and glue, right? Um, so that's that. Hopefully, that answers that. Um, any other questions we have on segmentation? And maybe one of the things this is going to get recorded. It's going to get put into. It's going to get sent out to you, but it's also going to get put. I'm sure someone's going to turn this into a blog post. And when they do, right? Um, what will happen is you'll have people going, uh, okay, I just watched this on segmentation. So let me uh, end by asking you a couple questions, right? What are you doing with segmentation? What are you using for segmentation? Uh, what are the most popular and useful segments you're finding out of your data set, right? Um, because the truth is you can do way more. I had that, I had that slide here where we were talking about, you know, different, different ones that you could do, right? All these. Um, I, I know folks that have different segments based on literally the amount of discount that they offer, right? So person who uses 10% coupon is tagged differently than a person who uses 25%. Um, and they, they want to know that, right? Because that's going to change how they send out emails and who they send it out to. Um, so if you're watching this and you're not live on the webinar, but you're watching it and, and it's on a blog post or something where there's common area, by all means, let me know what you're, what you're experiencing, uh, what tags are working for you? What tags haven't been working for you, right? Let me know and we'll uh, follow up and ask more questions or write, write some more articles about it. Um, there are a bunch of great resources uh, on segmentation. There's, there's one I should pull. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to bring it onto the screen. So hopefully you can see it here. Dy Dynamic Yield is a company that does a whole bunch of custom segmentation. It's really, um, it's really high end, and so you'll you'll um, you'll dig it, right? But they, uh, but I I don't. It's very expensive, so it's not really designed for uh, many of our our customers. But this uh, ebook, right, um, mastering micro segmentation for personalization. Uh, this ebook, even if you're not using their system, the stuff behind it, right. Uh, would be very, very helpful to, to learn, right? So uh, these guys are great at it. Um, the folks at, uh, yeah, these guys have at Metrillo, they have some customer segmentation information too, right? Um, on what to do and how to use it. They have a product as well. Uh, it doesn't come with us because we have, again, some other products. Uh, I think, um, uh, let's see, one of the other guys, Keep Analytics, um, does a lot. If you're, if you're someone who's like, well, yeah, I'm not a super huge Google Analytics person and it's a lot of work to figure out how to configure it. Um, Keep is a, is a product I use all the time. Um, and, uh, the nice thing about Heap is that I don't have to know in advance how to tag certain things, I can just go back later and say, people who did this, this, and this, give them this tag or whatever, and it'll just, it has all the data, it stores all the data, right? So there's a couple of different resources that you might want to check out. Um, of course, uh, anyone who who is like, hey, I want help with Google Analytics, I'm pretty sure that there's a bunch of Google Analytics courses out there that will help you too. So um, a lot of different ways that you can you can learn. But the one thing I probably didn't mention, I'm trying to go up here, is that all these segments, right? VIP segment, big spender segment, repeat customer segment. Um, what I probably should highlight and for, and forgot to, right, was um, that these are all done in the glue world. They're all done automatically, right? Uh, which is which is massive because you don't. If you're doing this in Google Analytics, right? What you have to do is you have to um, you have to go in and you know. Uh, this is all sample data, but 
Um, what you have to do is you have to go pull this data um, in, you have to go in and define these segments in Google, right? This, this, if they have this many purchases, this more store, you, you have to go do that work, get it configured in Google Analytics. If I go into Glue and I go to customers and go to segments, what you're going to see is these segments all are automatically there. I, I realize I didn't, I didn't mention that before, right? But they're all there automatically. So um, again, if you're a, if you're in our standard plans at, at Liquid Web, you get Glue included, and and you don't have to do anything, right? Once you do the connection between the two, it's pulling data out, it's running all the, it's munging all the data in its own uh, data store, so that you just log in and see it and go, oh, okay, so I have 30 VIP customers, I should probably follow up with them, right? Um, so anyway, that's that's the stuff that we have for you today. Um, I hope that was helpful. Uh, my name is Chris Lemma, and you can find me on Twitter at, at Chris Lemma. Uh, again, I'm the VP of products over at Liquid Web. We just launched some more stuff over at um, our on our WooCommerce platform that you can check out in our basic plans. And uh, more than happy to answer any more questions you have, whether it's now live or whether you uh, post it on whatever posts and blog posts and everything else that come with it. So thank you very much.